Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It is May the 13th, 2019. Let's talk boxing. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. There was a great fight. I did not make a pre-fight video. I should have. There was a simply great fight for the Super Welterweight Championship, 154 pounds, between champion Jared Hurd and J-Rock Williams. And let me just say this. First, uh, for folks interested in technique, uh, J-Rock Williams is great on the inside. We talk about fighters who have inside games, who can get deep in the pocket, deep in the pocket, and who can operate, still have defense, still throw power shots, have their whole construct where they're able to dissect the guy who's leaning on them. The film of this fight is worthwhile. I have the highlights in my favorites folder here on YouTube. I think it's worth a look. But let me back up a second here, right? Let's just talk about the secret of some fighter's success. I believe folks need to think about that in looking at these fighters and in considering their lifespans, right? Jared Hurd, Excellent fighter, effective fighter. He himself is good on the inside, although not as good as Williams. Heard who's taller, needs a little bit more space to get off shots. But understand, Jared Hurd's success comes at a high price. Boxing is a young man's sport. I want people to look at what this guy's doing. Sometimes a young fighter is successful because he runs red lights, because he makes sacrifices the rest of us would not make, the kind of sacrifices that fighters who want long careers won't make. And let's be real here. Unless you're a heavyweight, a long career means making it to 35 years old in the ring, right? Well, Jared Hurd is a guy who, to me, is far too front foot heavy. I mean, understand, he's fighting a counterpuncher who can take him out inside. And Hurd, who was taller, who has a long reach, just didn't have the skill set to take a step back and up on his toes and to force J-Rock, who's a master up close, to come find him. That's not Hurd's game. Hurd's game is to continually try to collapse the pocket. It's to continually try to lean on you, right? The strength of his core, the strength of his opponent's core, right? Their upper bodies matters in herd fights, because herd is leaning on you, right? He's using all of these muscles. Now, other fighters, Vladimir Klitschko, very successful heavyweight champion for several years, almost never was involved in fights where the guy's leaning on his upper body and he's leaning on the other guy's upper body. He always kept the fight at a distance, right? The jab was a distance maker, a range finder. And Klitschko really focused on punching power, not wrestling. And Klitschko was a guy who could lean back, make it hard for you to find him. In fights where Klitschko is fighting someone shorter, Sultan Abragamov, for example, comes to mind. You know, you notice that Klitschko made sure that the length between the two fighters made him hard to find. Here, Jared Hurd isn't hard to find. It's all blood and guts. It's all physicality. Now, I'm just telling you, you know, willpower, 
stamina. When you see that in a young fighter, I don't care how talented he is. And before this fight, Jared Hurd openly was saying he was among the top five pound-for-pound fighters in the sport. He was the champion. He had beaten fighters like Arislan Lara, right? He beat Tony <laughs> Williams, who beat Jamel Charlo, who beat J. Rock Williams. That's Williams's one loss, right? So hurd has been fighting top-level competition. But if he wants to have a career that goes a few years, that makes it to 35, he can't get hit as flush as he's getting hit. He can't rely on out-muscling an opponent with a lot of upper body, taking shots. Look at his face. It looks like he's been hit, right? I'm telling you, there are fighters out there. You see them in their 30s, right? Mayweather, Leonard, and the guy's face almost looks pristine, right? Jared Hurd, a younger man has been in wars. He looks like he's been in wars. I've watched the sport long enough where I'm just telling you, guys with great chins in their 20s, if they get hit enough, eventually that chin's going to go. If they get hit enough, then you start to notice that they're having problems, right? You might have an attached retina. You might have scar tissue that opens up every fight and things like that. Broken noses, problems breathing. So in, in their 20s, when a fighter is on the upswing in their career, running red lights, uh, not paying attention to fundamentals, not trying to hit and not be hit back, trading punches. Looks great to fans like us. The fighter might even win his fights. Sooner or later, the fighter's body is going to give. And I'm just telling you, if you don't focus enough on defense and avoiding punches, it's going to give earlier rather than later. Right? Let's also talk about something, too. I love fighters with a lot of courage. Visually, it's arresting. It's fascinating. There's no question about it, right? But I would rather, I would rather a fighter have great technique and win fights off of technique than to win fights off of, you know, courage and stamina, right? Every fight shouldn't be a war of attrition. I'm watching this Jared Hurd fight. Hurd's a slow starter, right? In every Hurd fight, he's usually down, let's say, three rounds to one, entering the fifth round, right? Then, of course, he's fighting, and, you know, his physicality takes over, and he's just bolder and running more red lights than his opponent. The opponent can't believe that Hurd is collapsing the pocket at all times, that regardless of what Hurd gets hit with, he's, you know, in the opponent's face. Hurd can hide his upper body, right? But this is a guy who you just can't take the fight out of. So even with, even with some technique, Hurd gives it away by needing to trade punches. It cost him his title here. Let's just talk about some of the things to look for when you look at the video on this fight and what won the fight for Williams, right? He's great in the pocket. He can throw extremely short punches, right? You've heard of Joe Lewis knocking guys out with short punches. Rocky Marciano wins the heavyweight title on a six-inch punch against Jersey Joe Walcott. Now, you hear those stories and you laugh about those stories until you see a fighter like this who's throwing six, four-inch punches, three-inch punches, and they're hurting the champ. Let me say this, too. He has the perfect opponent in front of him, right? Because Jared Hurd insists on trying to collapse the pocket, right? Jared Hurd is two front foot. So to get space, this is how good J. Rock Williams is inside. To get space, 
J-Rock bumps him with a shoulder. Right? He'll bump him with the right shoulder. It'll throw Hurd off of him about this much. Then Williams can turn, get his whole body into the punch. He literally can turn over a hand. And by the time Hurd is leaning back in, which is just seconds later, Williams's punch is there. It's masterful. Let me say this too. If you feel a fight might go the distance, it's better to win rounds early than to, than to win rounds late. Because if the judges see you dominate early, it could have a momentum domino type effect. Right? I see you look good in the second round or the third round, and I'm a judge for the fight. When you come out for the fourth round or the fifth round and you look good, I might give you those rounds. I might reach the conclusion early in the fight. And this is just human psychology. It's J. Rock Williams' night. You might actually teach me to focus on things that are working for you, like your bumps and right hands, like your short left hook. Right? You show that in the 11th round, I might say, wow, Williams is better than I thought. But by then, my scorecard for the first 10 rounds is already in the bank. Here, Williams drops Hurd in the second round of the fight. Hurd, big favorite coming in, right? The judges are looking at this and they're saying, hey, I don't care who was the favorite. This could be Williams' night. They realize, wow, Williams is doing some damage. So by the time we get to the part of the fight where Hurd usually wakes up, the fourth, fifth round, right? Williams has banked some rounds. Williams has let us know the title hangs in the balance. It might change hands tonight. Let me say this too. The kind of fighter Williams would have a problem with is the kind of guy who he can't counter with very short punches. The kind of guy who isn't in the pocket to get bumped by him. So he could then destroy that opponent with an inside game. So Jamel Charlo moved around the ring, isn't living in the pocket, is episodic. Right? But Jared Hurd's a guy who knows one way to fight. So even with that Jamel Charlo film, Right, Jared Hurd, rather than use his reach and height and length, just didn't know how to. He needs to fight leaning forward. He couldn't fight leaning backward. Let me say this too. You have some gifted punchers in the sport. Right, guys who throw knockout level punches with both hands, right? I'll name two. They're probably the two biggest box office kings of the sport right now, Anthony Joshua and Canelo. And it's interesting that these guys, both relatively young men, right? Canelo's in his 20s. Understand, Joshua in his 20s is in a division where many fighters peak later, right? The heavyweight division. That's why you have Guys like Luis Ortiz, still in the mix, right? Deontay Wilder in his 30s, right? Tyson Fury in his 30s now. And what's interesting with both of these guys is even though they have knockout power with both hands, gifted punchers, right? I can't say when I'm talking about Joshua or Canelo, yeah, the secret of his success is a long, straight right hand. Because, quite frankly, every punch they throw is hard. And what's interesting with these fighters, with physical gifts, right, big punches, left hand, right hand, what's interesting with both is that they're spending their 20s trying to improve their technique. Right, Canelo the puncher, 
is, you know, fooling around with being elusive, bobbing and weaving, looking smooth about it, making sure the other guy can't hit him with punches. Focus on defense, right? Anthony Joshua, where only one guy has gone the distance against him, big puncher, is trying to develop his jab, right? He wants to be Vladimir Klitschko. Right? Joshua already, both Canelo and Joshua are excellent counterpunchers. It's interesting that these heavy handed guys have decided to devote a lot of time to learning counterpunching technique. Here, Jared heard a young guy very successful, very successful was unbeaten going into this fight, right? Jared Hurd wanted to, as in every fight, physically impose himself on his opponent. He wanted to rely on his physicality and his stamina and his upper body strength. He wanted to lean on the guy. He wanted to turn a boxing match in part into a wrestling match. I'm just telling you, that doesn't last. You can be world-class at it in your 20s. Sooner or later, your body starts breaking down. Right? The fighters who focus on defense, the fighters who focus on a great jab, length, to create distance between you and them, especially when they're very tall and have a significant height advantage, which Anthony Joshua's had in some fights, right? Those are the fighters who survive. Look at the fighters who are successful in their 30s. You're not going to find a lot of guys who are always collapsing the pocket. You're just not. Some of the guys who had longevity, who you think of as murderous punches, punchers, who beat guys up in the pocket, guys like Julio Cesar Chavez. When you revisit their films, you're going to notice that Chavez had his head on a swivel, that Chavez actually had defensive skills. So in my opinion, Right, the young man part of boxing caught up with Jared Hurd against J. Rock Williams. Right, he had been living on collapsing the pocket. Right, punches that are strong punches, but he's not a gifted puncher. He needs to hit you a few times before the lights go out. Right, whereas Joshua, I could be wide awake, get hit the wrong way. The lights go out. Canelo, we saw it with Amir Khan, right? Khan's looking good winning rounds. Lights go out. With Hurd, he had to hit you a few times. He had to collapse the pocket. He had to get physical with you. He had to show you that he was the bigger man by leaning on you, getting you up against the ropes, right? He's not a guy who operates well in the middle of the ring. Eventually, when you're the champ and you're fighting, by definition, world-class contenders, eventually you're going to have a night where you run into a guy who can shorten his punches, who can maintain his defense deep in the pocket, who can counter you, who can't believe that you're going to try to stand right in front of him. Round after round. He ran into J. Rock Williams. He lost his title. This fight is a must-see. If for no other reason than to check out how J. Rock Williams works inside. This is a guy with an A-level inside game. Right? For anyone who wants to know what a great inside fighter looks like, what a guy with skills deep in the pocket looks like, I want you to look at this film. J-Rock is so good that Hurd at times throws right hands. This is with the guys as close as I am to this land. 
he throws right hands up top on Williams. And Williams, from deep in the pocket, from this close to his opponent, knows it's coming and blocks it. In other words, up close he has the defense. The mistake Heard makes is he's always up close. I know in street fighting, you want a front foot. Boxing isn't street fighting. It's actually a craft. You need to blend a front foot game with a back foot game, right? You cannot have the same strategy round after round. That would be like a fastball pitcher in baseball always throwing fastballs. Sooner or later, the hitter is going to figure it out. That's how I saw this fight. Let me hear how you saw this fight. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.